I'm guessing at this point, Stugatz, we have done the rinse, repeat, rinse, repeat cycle enough that people are at the point listening to this. Enough with Aaron Rodgers. Move on from Aaron Rodgers. But there is hmm. one exception, Stugatz. When you have Chris Russo sound of him blowing a gasket on Aaron Rodgers, we played some of that for you as the controversy mushroom clouded. But now a caller has called in to Mad Dog Sports Radio on Sirius XM, uh -oh. and he has agitated the Mad Dog. When it comes down to it, it's about people's personal choice. But here's a All right, let me ask you, Craig, uh, Craig with, with, without hearing a live story, let me ask you, Craig, did you get your vaccination shot? No, I did not. Why not? Because I, I don't feel it's right for me. I have my age and my health. And listen, dog. Well, I how, uh, how old are you, Craig? How old are you? How old are you? I have not been sick with a flu or even a cold. I didn't ask you that. Uh, okay, you're, you're Atlas. How old are you? 50 years old. And that's what goes into me not getting this shot. My my history of my health with viruses okay. and other things. All right. Well, I mean, and I've, been, the... and I've been taking I've been taking natural supplements since March of 2020. With All right. So you're one. So, so you're one of those. So so you're so to make a long story short, you're in a Rogers camp where you think it's better off not to take the vaccine, despite all the evidence and data that says otherwise, you are one because, well, hold it now. And Go I'm look at the data. For me personally, dog, that's uh, where you're missing it. It's a personal But you are not a starting quarterback story. making $35 million a year, Craig. If you miss a day of work, nobody so cares, okay? I'm sorry. You are not a starting quarterback in the National Football League making $35 million a year. That is not, you don't do that. See, that's the problem with this. What Rogers did is he got the anti-vaxxers out there to inundate radio shows, including mine. To do what to them? Mm. Inunate? See, that's the problem with this. What Rogers did is he got the anti-vaxxers out there to inundate radio shows, including mine. Inundate. He that's inundate. what he meant. Yeah, yes. it's a fine. Inundate yeah. is what. To inundate radio shows. <laughs> to inundate radio shows. Including mine. It might be a tomato <laughs> tomato. Look it up. It's not. Why does he have such epic music sending him to commercials in glorious fashion well, as he finishes he's a He's still point? on radio. Yeah. I mean, yeah. He has commercials. <laughs> Whereas we just kind of do our thing. Oh, I just, I just didn't know that we were doing still the epic music throwing to break thing because Stugatz, well, I there's still radio going on, Dad. Well, I want to ask you this, Stugatz, because you and I are both people who love radio. Roy is somebody who loves radio. Mike used to love radio, but he is now having a torrid affair. Now I read books. With audio and audio books, he has he has left his longtime love for his mistress of just audio that's not radio, or the only thing that's coming out of my radio is audio that's not on either AM, FM, or as far as I can tell, even satellite. At this point, Mike, you're all Bluetooth, you're all digital linked up, right? You're not listening to anything that's on either traditional radio or even satellite radio. Un unless I'm somehow stuck in a car during a Canes game, I do not turn on my FM AM band. I love a good radio and I love a good radio show. I love some static. I love going in and out. I love the exit music. I love the intro music. I love a good rejoin. I love talk radio. I really do. I mean, even talk radio that I can't hear. I mean, I, I love it because that's part of the charm of talk radio well, you'll lose the signal for 15 seconds. You don't care. And then Mad Dog just picks it up. You know, I mean, it's, he's the best. I miss it. This sounds a bit haunted. This sounds like I am walking through a dark area that has some greenery but i can't tell that it's green because it's just scary shadows right. and there's a pathway dimly lit some of the lights are not working and i am walking toward the giving of a sports take in old-fashioned radio who is football's mvp We'll be back after this. <laughs> what do you mean we'll be back after this? We're just getting started. We're Roy, walking. Roy thought you were teasing going to break. No. Wait, no, he's well, coming that, back That's in. what Mad Dog just did. Yeah, I know. Time temp reset the topics. And the host. Remember, I just got in my car.
I'd like to, before we do this, before we do some old-fashioned radio, I would like to deconstruct. What side are we going on our radio dial? Just left to right? right left to, left. to right. Okay. Left to right. Always left to right. I am with Mike Ryan, though. I, somehow, having come up through this system, Stugatz will still listen to... To Mad Dog. <laughs> or to Keyshawn, Jay, and Max, or Max, Jay, and Keyshawn, or Jay... Sean and Max. Max has made that show better. Or Han. Yeah. Stugatz will get in his car and instead of podcast on demand, instead of Grateful Dead, mm-hmm. Stugatz, creature of habit, will drive in. Well, drive in, he's cheating. He's just trying to grab some thoughts because he hasn't watched anything. Bingo. And so he's just stealing some takes. Yep. But on the way home, that's just pleasure. <laughs> On the way home, that's just habit. That's just pattern. That's just a formed old man listening, mind, listening mindlessly to just the topics of the day and dropping into a tepid bath of familiarity. <laughs> Never evolving. <laughs> just, and it's just, I want you to imagine Stugatz taking off the towel, okay? He's arrived at the bath of tepid, lukewarm takes about Jets football. And he has dipped himself right up to his nipples. And now he is wiggling his toes in that tepid water, wanting to talk about who is the Jets' best quarterback option 10 hours of ESPN Radio's lineup is is studying who is the best option for the Jets at quarterback. By former Giants. <laughs> I think it's Lamar Jackson, Dan. Well, they have a couple of Jets, too, I guess. They have all Jets and Giants in that lineup. I'm talking about the MVP, which well, is wide open. If you're like me and log on, if you're in the right state, to the DraftKings Sportsbook app, You would notice that Tom Brady became the leader in the MVP odds chase, despite not playing, because Dak (laughs) lost at home. Mike, all of them. Mahomes threw for 155 yards. Stafford threw up an egg. Kyler Murray didn't play, play. and his team ended up winning anyway. Henry's hurt. But what's weird is Aaron Rodgers didn't play. Burrow's been bad the last, well, they've lost the last couple of weeks. But Lamar Jackson overcame two separate 14-point deficits. Is leading his team in rushing and two positive COVID tests. Yeah, yeah, immunized, and he is their sole weapon. Really, maybe you can lump in Hollywood Brown, who is made by the threat of Lamar Jackson. Well, and and Andrews, Andrews is one of those Frankenstein. Yeah, Andrews, you're right, absolutely, absolutely right. Mark Andrews is a terrific tight end, mm-hmm. but I mean, Le'Veon Bell, Devontae Freeman, it's like. It's the past. I, I was laughing about that. I was the guy's getting carries for the Ravens. Latavius Murray. It's it's every disposable yep. back that we've talked about it's, being at the tail end of fume. It's starting franchise mode in Madden, going to free agents to give your running back room a boost and seeing who's available. And the, they're doing it. Lamar Jackson, if he wasn't with Baltimore, they wouldn't be any good right now. They'd be terrible. Man. They'd, they'd be terrible. And they they. They are four bounces from being terrible with Lamar Jackson. Yeah, with they Lamar are. Jackson. Yeah. But I, when you look at how much offense he's generated, I think he's on pace for an NFL record for a single player generating offense. I think he's on pace for over 1,000 yards on the ground, close to 4,000 yards through the air. How could it not be Lamar Jackson? In terms of value to one's team, the entire offense is predicated on his threat, and he's doing something dangerous. He's doing something that we all assume isn't sustainable, Yet he's not slowing down. He's not picking up knocks. He's been fantastic. He's the MVP. Wow, you hit that. Yeah, you he hit controls that. Controls it. Uh, I mean, but when you ask yeah. the question, how could he not be? Because Tom Brady's still playing at forty-four, and Aaron's still playing. Well, it's debatable. Aaron is he not. He even said himself, think, he's like, he I, think, I, I yeah. might be available for Seattle. <laughs> I want to get into the point though that Mike is making about. Lamar Jackson, because invariably, and we think, we like to think, although Stugatz falls in this trap all the time, that the way that you measure these things is not just winning when it comes to quarterback, that wins are not a quarterback stat. And many of you will mention not only that Lamar Jackson went two televised hours in a playoff game not completing a pass back when we were doubting whether he could be an actual and real quarterback. You know, you're the only person that does that. Yeah, 
I think people remember his playoff performances oh, I being do. bad. I, I, I think I, the day after, but you know, it's yeah, a couple but of years. Yeah, you're the one that constantly now. reminds me about the Chargers. I think at time they were San Diego. No, th- no, at that time they were Los Angeles. I, you're the person that points that specific performance out, but he does have disappointing playoff performances. The one at the Bills, for example, where he left injured too. It's a question mark about him. No, but that's the next thing on Lamar Jackson. Um, Dan, you've already told him win a win a Super Bowl. Well, no, no, I told him it's coming. Like because when you win a second MVP and he's about to win a second MVP, because I agree with Mike. Like, how can you dispute but that? Dan? His odds are very long. Well, why? How? Like, Tom Brady still yeah. exists. Oh, that's right, and Rodgers. But we just Rogers said that so moments ago. <laughs> For some reason, you're acting <laughs> you surprised by it. He forgot said. he said it. He forgot think, anybody think, said it. Uh, but the thing I wanted to say about Lamar Jackson, and the reason I keep bringing that up rhetorically, I believe that was the introduction to him as a playoff quarterback, and he gave all the reasons to doubt it the way people had already been doubting it, including something else I say all the time, six-time executive of the year, Bill Polian. <laughs> <laughs> and he went two hours without two televised hours without completing a pass. But his reputation will be because people do it with winning, even though winning is not a quarterback stat. Do it in the playoffs. I won't believe it until you do it in the playoffs. But I want to get to Mike's point in the middle of what he just said, which is the reason many people question this beyond college quarterbacks who run around at that size had not been pro versatile is because how can that hold up? How can you sustain being the best athlete on the field all the time? That's going to age poorly, especially if this is the usage rate, Mike, because right behind him is all the evidence that you need that you can't keep running the ball like that and not age quickly that it's happened to Le'Veon Bell. Devontae Freeman and Le'Veon Bell were electric, the both of them, one of them patient, one of them a power cord, both of them disposable very quickly because you can't carry that kind of load in the league without it chewing up your body. He's missed two games in his career. I mean, just two games in his career. I think he's going to age more quickly than other people age because of the thing I'm talking about. You can't uh, can't disguise your running back as the quarterback. Right. And not expect to, his body to get used up the same way, Stugatz. If you're going to use him like a running back as the quarterback, even though Mike's right when he says he doesn't take a lot of hits, the way Russell Wilson doesn't take a lot of hits. I don't know how the way he Kyler manages. Murray doesn't take doesn't a lot take, of hits. He doesn't yeah. take a lot of vicious looking yeah. hits, but he does go down on the ground a lot. He do, he also fumbles a lot for somebody that's not taking these gigantic hits. He's it's it's been his entire professional career, and he's lasted this long by knowing how to take a hit, I presume. But right now on DraftKings Sportsbook, he is presently plus 1,000 to win the MVP. He's behind Stafford still. He's behind Kyler Murray. He's behind Tom Brady. And DraftKings has Tom Brady and Josh Allen as co-favorites at plus 350. That's a very, just by the odds, that is a very wide open race. And in a wide open year, if I'm on DraftKings Sportsbook, I'm taking Lamar Jackson plus 1,000. All those quarterbacks last week, all of them, Stugatz. Josh Allen, I forgot about him. Yeah. All of them were terrible last week or, or, or did not play. And all of them have more in terms of skill position players. Every one of those guys that Mike just named. Every single last one of them has so much skill. A position lot help. more. Yeah. yeah. He doesn't have it. I, I mean, know. he's it. The second <laughs> least skill position help is probably, it would probably Josh be Allen. Josh Allen. Yeah. With Singletary and Diggs yeah. and Manny Sanders. Mm-hmm. It's... It's unreal what Lamar Jackson's done. And I'm I'm one of those Lamar Jackson haters. He's a Ravens quarterback. I'm a Browns guy. I, I, I try to find every flaw in this guy's game. He is incredible. Well, and, and deserving throw, of a second MVP. He's throwing the ball well down the field, too. Because his stats right. would be predictable. Even, his stats would be even better if Hollywood Brown were better. If Hollywood he'd Brown didn't drop yeah, the he ball. Catch the ball. But Mike, what do you make of Dan's point that he's 24 years old? He's been at this for four years. He's only missed two games, and this isn't gonna look good in a couple I just of years. Think or perhaps I think it's coming. Good. Missing the two games. Mike, like, I think it's coming though. I think you cannot it's gotta. Have, you can't have this workload and expect him to still be the best athlete on the field at 29. It's got to, but, but we always assume like, well, once the athleticism goes, then the rest of the game will be severely diluted. And that may be true. The, the threat of him running and not just running, but running so well, like among the league's best, when you sort leading rushers, he's still technically in contention to win the rushing title at quarterback. It's wild 
But if you dilute that speed a little bit, if you make him think twice about taking yet another hit because he's got a nagging injury from the week before, will the passing statistics hold up? And we all imagine the bottom will fall off on that as it did with Cam Newton because he started taking a lot of hits and car crashes in his case too. You know what we never talked about, Stugatz, that was funny, and I'm surprised that we never talked about it just because of the personalities that involved that were involved. Uh, Lamar Jackson has a lot of 100-yard rushing games, and he got one of them against Fangs, and Fangs didn't like the way he got one of them. He said in all his years of football, <laughs> he had never seen anything like that, that at the end of the game, the, the Ravens just basically ran a play to get him over 100 yards. It's like uh, Steph the other night where he hit an unnecessary basket to get to 50 points. People were upset about that. This was Fangs was so outraged it was so about Fangs. this. It was so very Fangs. <laughs> How dare you? How dare you get to a round number on my watch? I would say that the Hawks announcers getting mad about Steph, that's among the lamest things that people in sports get mad about. How dare you get to a round statistical number instead of stopping gracefully at number 98? 98 yards would have been fine by Fangs. 48 points would have been fine by those Atlanta Hawks announcers. But when you go that extra mile and get those extra two yards or two points, then I will become indignant <laughs> because you have round numbered my ass. These fangs. I mean, <laughs> was that surprising to you? I, I'm not surprising. It was delightful. I, I mean, just, Tom Coughlin would also be I, upset. I, I just, I, mean. I just love that. There are still a couple of T-Rexes roaming those sidelines, getting mad about <laughs> Round numbers. Lamar Jackson is uh he's about a hundred and I don't know, twenty yards away from passing Paul Horning on the all time rushing list. <laughs> I mean it's unbelievable. Paul Horning. Paul Horning's considered one of the all time greats. <laughs> was was Paul Horning uh was Paul Horning also one of the guys in a famous viral video who fell off of a stage while trying to accept an award and his pants were falling down or was that Ditka? I'm just thinking of an oh old Oh god, I'm going to Google it right yeah, now. Yes. Wait, what, what, what just happened? Just go ahead and Google please. Paul Horning falling off stage and see what uh what comes up because when I think of Paul Horning, I think of old founding father type of running back and I just think of old. I think it was Ditka. I think it might have been both of them, though. Wow, both of them together? I know on on different stages. I think they might be. I think they might be two different videos because I feel like I remember Paul Horning trying to pick up his pants. His pants were falling down. Oh my god! <laughs> well, he I fell just, through a curtain. I just watched Ditka fall off stage. Oh after my knocking goodness! Over his he table. fell through a black curtain, which exposed a white background, which made it all that much funnier. Oh, oh my god! Is that Mongo? Oh. This was a while ago because that's Mongo McMichael. Okay, but you guys are still on Ditka. Is it still just Ditka? Or are you going to tell me that there's another Horning? There was a table that fell, too. <laughs> what was going on? This is a disaster. It's a dinner. It's a I feel like dinner. I would know the Horning thing, Dan. He went to Notre Dame. Damn it. We know I got it wrong. I got but my, I'm going to investigate. I got my I'll call old in Detective Tony. Uh, you know how this is back to the Lamar Jackson point as we investigate further, Dan. You know how you and I both occasionally catch shit for our original Devontae Adams takes? Because there was a time, if you can believe it, listening in, in the audience, that Devontae Adams was not good. He's made a lot of strides and improvements in his game, which makes us, in retrospect, very wrong about Devontae Adams. Though in the moment, we'd contend we were right. What are you laughing about? <laughs> I got Vince Neal falling I, off the stage I, I, I think here. Paul Horning was on the same stage, though. <laughs> Vince Neal was a front man for Motley Crue, I believe, not a quarterback no i know didn't kelsey Grammer fall off a stage once and Did he? He shot a bunch of f-bombs I'm bring sure? that up bring that up I, i'm learning about this so guys are you alleging that paul horning was on the ditka stage yeah hold on a second <laughs> i need to i'm investigating right now i think horning may have pushed Ditka off the no, stage no he didn't push him he fell backwards <laughs> no he pushed him off the stage that sounds right paul horning pushed mike ditka off the stage and then he roasted him <laughs> Oh my God! Horning was the guy who yes, pushed it. Yes, it yes. was in the same. <laughs> yeah. Did he get stuck? Kelsey Grammer got stuck in the stage that he fell off of. Oh, we gotta find him. There's a better oh video. My God, of this. Horning arms extended. <laughs> you should also look up Dave Grohl falling off the stage too, because he took. Like oh, a that's a good point. one. Yeah, it was in this book that I read. 
He, he tells a great Unaudible. story. Yeah. You must feel good. You got the story exactly. Well, I, I, I more feel good about Jessica saying, I know if Paul Horning was involved in one of these, and she just saw him push Mike Ditka off the stage and didn't recognize him. He didn't push him, Dan. He did too. I, I Ditka think flipped the table. No, Kelsey no, no, Grammer. Smitty, watch Sorry, the whole move, thing. We are moving on to Kelsey Grammer right now. He, I think he just fell through the stage. I think the stage no, gave guys, out. Guys, Paul Horning with full extension, okay? <laughs> he pushed Mike Ditka off that stage and took delight in it. <laughs> and then roasted him. <laughs> so the point about Lamar Jackson, <laughs> in, in oh, us yeah. nitpicking his game, we were... Obviously, nitpicking at things that were problematic. Entering this year, he wasn't good throwing out on the perimeter. He wasn't good playing from behind. And this year, he's dramatically improved. This is courtesy of Steven Ruiz of The Ringer. Only four quarterbacks have generated more EPA on throws aimed outside the numbers this season. What are you laughing about? <laughs> she Sydney? got to it. He did push him. <laughs> <laughs> It's the best video. It's amazing. 